Kamala Harris wanted another debate, and she got one, a debate with herself. Listen, Kamala Harris participated in a one-person debate last night, and she lost. She was supposed to close the deal at a CNN town hall last night, but somehow she made things worse. I'll just tell you what I'm hearing from people who I have been talking to, uh, and that is that uh, if her goal was to close the deal, they're not sure she did that. And, you know, some people have asked, is she being held to a different standard? Maybe. But that's maybe the world that she's living in. Dana, what different standard is she being held to? Is it because she's a woman? Is it because she's black? Is it because she's new at this? Because she's not that new at this. She's been a politician for 20 years. They're still making excuses for her. Do you want a president who the media has to make excuses for? We just had that. And that's why Kamala is the nominee. If this was the final job interview, Kamala is not getting a call back. In any job interview, it sounds cliche, but they ask you, what's your biggest weakness? What weaknesses do you bring to the table and how do you plan to overcome them while you're in office? That's a great question, Joe. Um, well, I am certainly not perfect, <laughs> so let's start there. And um, I think that I, perhaps a weakness, some would say, but I actually think it's a strength, is I really do value having a team of very smart people around me who bring to my de decision-making process different perspectives. I, um, my team will tell you, I am constantly saying, let's kick the tire on that. Let's kick the tires on it. My biggest weakness, I could think of a half a dozen things off the top of my head. I'm impatient. Sometimes I don't listen carefully. Sometimes I'm late. But my biggest weakness is actually my strength. Come on. So let me ask you a question right off the bat. What do you think your greatest strengths as a manager? Why don't I tell you what my greatest weaknesses are? I work too hard, I care too much, and sometimes I can be too invested in my job. Okay. And your strengths? Well, my weaknesses are actually strengths. <laughs> Kamala is becoming the stereotype of a typical slippery politician who's just too fuzzy to trust. Is there something you can point to in your life, political life or in your life in the last four years, that you think is a mistake that you have learned from? I mean, I've, I, I've made many mistakes. Um, and they range from, you know, <laughs> if you've ever parented a child, you know you make lots of mistakes, too. Um, in my role as vice president, I mean, I've probably worked very hard at making sure that um, I am well versed on issues. And um, I think that is very important. It's a mistake not to be well versed on an issue and feel compelled to answer a question. You know, Kamala actually touched on something that makes her human. She became a stepmother to Doug's children and she made some mistakes helping raise them. That's relatable. A lot of Americans deal with that. An answer could give us insight into who Kamala is, but she gives us a phony answer. That her biggest mistake is that she's too prepared? Does anybody believe that Kamala Harris is overprepared for this job? Again, off the top of my head, half a dozen things. I was immature in college. I didn't take care of my body in my 30s. <laughs> I shouldn't have swallowed that pill Gutfeld gave me. She could have killed two birds with one stone and said, well, we probably shouldn't have spent so much money on COVID recovery. We didn't get the number right. How hard is that? You show some humility and then you distance yourself from Biden in the same answer. At this point, I'm not sure Kamala can answer what's your favorite color. I may not be quick to have the answer as soon as you ask it about a p specific policy issue sometimes because I'm going to want to research it. I'm going to want to study it. I'm kind of a nerd sometimes, <laughs> I confess. If this is Kamala Harris studied and well-researched, we're in trouble. She spent 48 hours preparing for this town hall and couldn't even answer this question. If you could accomplish only one major policy goal that required congressional action, what would it be and why? 
Well, there's not just one. I have to be honest with you, Carol. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to happen, but let's let's. I think that maybe part of this point that I how I think about it is we've got to get past this era of politics and partisan politics, slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our country. She couldn't name a single thing she'd do on day one. How is this race even close? I'm surprised she didn't say, I'll tell you what I won't do on day one, be a dictator. Trump said, day one, drill, baby, drill, and close the border. Kamala said on day one, I'm going to get past the era of partisan politics, slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our country. That's memorable. Oh, yeah, that is so memorable. I'm sure everyone's talking about Kamala's day one agenda. This is when Anderson Cooper started getting annoyed. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> so remember, Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it? Come on, they didn't. But you're agreeing so to a bill on. that would earmark $650 million <laughs> to continue building that we, wall. I, I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill to further strengthen and secure our border. We need a president who is grounded in common sense and practical outcomes. Like, let's just fix this thing. Let's just fix it. Why is there any ideological perspective on this? Let's just fix the problem. If, if, to fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump to actually still go to build the wall. I'm not afraid of good ideas where they occur. You know, so you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was, did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. I just talk, talked about that wall, right? We just talked about it. He didn't actually do much of anything. But you do want to build some wall. I want to strengthen our border. Kamala is campaigning on fixing the problems she created, promising to build a wall that she tore down and called stupid, but now thinks is a good idea. And she's asking the voters to give her the power to do the things that she already has the power to do, but hasn't done. You've been in the White House for, for four years. You were vice president, not the president. But why wasn't any of that done over the last four years? Well, there was a lot that was done, but there's more to do, Anderson. And, and I'm pointing out things that need to be done that haven't been done, but need to be done. OK, they haven't been done because she hasn't done them. She's done nothing except reverse the progress Trump made. We keep waiting for Kamala to have this big breakout moment that justifies her coronation. There has to be some reason the Democrats anointed this woman. And it's 12 days until the election. And they're all asking her the same exact questions and expecting a better answer. How can we differentiate your policy and your beliefs from that of Biden's? That's a great question, and thank you. Well, first of all, my administration will not be a continuation of the Biden administration. I bring to this role my own ideas and my own experience. I represent a new generation of leadership on a number of issues and believe that we have to actually take new approaches. What are the new approaches? <laughs> Nobody knows. She's gotten asked the same series of questions for the last month. How are you different than Joe? What happened to the border? How are you going to tackle inflation? Did you notice Biden was slowing down at any time? Oh, and who are you? And uh, what are you going to do on day one? She's hurting herself on CNN and shows like The View. What does that tell you? The media has given up. And now they're embarrassed that they propped her up. When she doesn't want to answer a question, her habit is to kind of go to world, word salad city. The word salad stuff gets on my nerves. I think that some of the evasions are not necessary. She uh, focused a lot more on Donald Trump, I think it's fair to say, than she did on uh, many specifics in terms of what she would do uh, as president. She's like a true double threat. You know, she's terrible on her feet when she gets unexpected questions. And simultaneously, she can't even answer the expected questions. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. Empty, empty, empty. If she were an animal, she'd be a duck-billed platitude. Kamala went from the next messiah to a duck-billed platitude. And you have to remember, these CNN people, they're there to help. This is a hand-picked town hall with her good friend Anderson, who isn't asking gotcha questions. 
Oh, what's your biggest weakness? What's your biggest mistake? These are questions an admissions director asks a 13-year-old applying to prep school. Leland, tell me about a challenge you've faced in your life that you were able to overcome. Could you see Anderson Cooper asking Trump the questions he's asking Kamala? She is being held to a different standard, and she's not even up to it. I think that um, she takes a really long time to get to her point and that she does rely on talking points too often. I think she's gotten much better than she used to, but it's almost as if she's afraid to say something that will later come back to haunt her. I just wish she would say, this is our plan, or you're right, a lot of immigrants have, illegal immigrants have come into this country during the Biden administration, but this is why, and this is what I wanna do about it moving forward. You know, I just, I, I, don't, I don't find her explanation of policy that compelling compared to say someone like Bill Clinton or Barack Obama. Kamala is not Bill Clinton or Barack Obama. Tell me something I don't know, Katie. The media made Kamala from scratch this summer and told everyone she was sensational and are now disappointed she's collapsing during the home stretch. Kamala Harris was just a fantasy of the media's imagination, an anything but Joe doll that they pieced together in Chicago, and now they're all shocked she could barely walk. The scary thing is, if the election had been in September, Kamala might have won, and America would have been stuck with a woman not even cut out to be a small town mayor. That's how corrupt the Kamala candidacy is. It was a ruse that ran out of runway. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.